So there are two main ways that we usually use to find the centroid of a volume, and that is the disk method and the shell method. And in this video, we're going over the disk method. And if you want a video going over the shell method, you can click on this video link. So I have all the um, steps written out down in the description. You can check that out. And if you find this video helpful, hit that like button and please subscribe. So these equations might look familiar to you if you already know how to find the centroid of a line or the centroid of an area. But if you don't, x bar, y bar, and z bar are the center, the coordinates of the center of mass of, a, of an object, where um, they're all pretty much the same except for that each one has either x tilde, y tilde, or z tilde, or that x, y, and z, um, and z with a little squiggly line over the top. Um, those are the centroids of um, your differential volume that we'll be talking about. And so each one has its own um, different variable in there. But other than that, they're all the same. So we integrate with, along the volume with respect to a certain variable, either x, y, or z, just depending on the shape you are going to be integrating and what's going to be easiest. Um, in this case, it will be the z variable. And so our dv, as I've written out here, using the disk method is going to be pi r squared dz. And that is because we will be adding up a bunch of thin disks all the way up, well, in this case, along the z axis, and to find our z bar and so pi r squared is the area of the disk and dz is the differential um, thickness of that disk and adding all those up gives us the um, centroid or helps us find the centroid of that volume so that being said we only need to find uh, z bar because this cone frustum which is just a cone with the top cut off, is symmetrical about the x and y axes. So we know because it's symmetrical about those axes that um, the centroid is going to lie somewhere along the line, somewhere along the z axis, or in other words, where the x and y axes cross. And so because it lies somewhere along the z axis, we only need to find z bar. So to find z bar, we are going to use our equation we have over here. So z bar is the integral across the volume, and we're going to be integrating with respect to z. So we're going to be integrating from zero to two because the cone frustum is two feet tall. So zero to two, and then because we're integrating with respect to z, z tilde is going to be just z. And that is because the z tilde, just like x and y tilde, are the center of mass, or the centroid, of our differential volume. And our differential volume is our, the volume of our disk that we're adding up. <coughs> And that disk, its center of mass or center of gravity is right in the middle. Or in other words, it's right at z, because each of those disks is going to be a differential height z up the, up the z axis. So when we're integrating with respect to z, our z tilde is going to be um, just z. If we're integrating with respect to y, our y tilde is just going to be y. And likewise, if we're integrating with respect to x, x tilde is just going to be x. Now, if we were integrating with respect to y, um, z tilde would be something different, but we don't need to worry about that in this case. Um, so, from there we have z tilde. Now we need to find what dv is. So we know that that is going to be pi r squared dz. 
and then on the bottom similarly it's going to be the same just without the z so it's going to be pi r squared dz but the radius of our disk that we're going to be adding up is just going to be the edge of the cone frustum. That's going to be the radius of each one of those um, disks that we're adding up to make up the volume of this um, the cone frustum. And because we are integrating with respect to z, I have this equation, which represents the edge of the cone frustum. I have that equation solved for y, so we have just all the z variables on one side. And so this r is just going to be y. It's going to be y squared. So I think that this part, just setting it up, is the hardest part of the whole thing. Once you've got it set up, once you know what variables need to go where, the calculus isn't even that difficult usually, especially if you can just plug it into a calculator. But plugging what we know into that, it goes from zero to two, z times pi, then y is this, negative three eighths um, times by z minus four, all of that squared, dz all divided by the integral from 0 to 2 again of pi times by negative 3 eighths. Now it's the same as on the top but I'm going to write it a little bit differently just to show you that it can be. When we're pulling this 3 eighths out it's just going it can be squared and then this can just be c minus 4 squared dz. And then, now I'm not going to go through the calculus of all this, but if you were to, you, were, you would be getting, or what you should get is 0 0.786 feet. So our centroid in the z direction is going to be 0 0.786 feet um, up along the z axis. And so that is where our centroid is going to lie. So there's a pretty simple example of how to find the centroid of a volume using the disk method. And once again, the steps are written out down in the description. You can check that out. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them down in the comments and I'll reply to them. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button. And if you're new to this channel, my name is Preston Palmer, student engineering. And my goal is to help other engineering students like me better understand engineering. So if you found this video helpful, hit that like button and please subscribe.